to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all the saints of God. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength, our strength. To him, he is your with us. Give him your love, he's in love with us. He will heal our hands, he will cleanse our hands. If we rent our hearts, he will heal our land. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, today is a very beautiful day because the Church of India celebrates the uh, feast of Mariam Teresa who is from our own land and who was canonized by Pope Francis last year. And whenever when we, 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 we celebrate the sanctity of someone who was like you and me. It is, it is an impetus for all of us to go towards this, to move towards the sanctity, which is possible. It is possible to be saints even in today's context. And this is what uh, saints like Miriam Teresa teach us. And we also uh, celebrate in the Salesian world, we celebrate Blessed Stephen Sandor, um, he was a Salishan brother. We, all, we have a priest as well as lay brothers, coadjutor brothers we call. They remain as brothers till the end. And he, he was a, a lay brother and he was a martyr. Uh, uh, originally he was born in Hungary. He was born in a kind of a upper middle class. His dad was working in railways. There were three children and they were brought up in a very good Christian faith. And of course, very interesting here. Uh, uh, Blessed Stephen, he comes to know about the Salesians by reading the Salesian Bulletin. You know why I take more interest in this is this. Uh, Salesian Bulletin is a magazine which runs, uh, <coughs> which is there in all, 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 all the countries. And uh, for India, I run the magazine. I'm the editor of the Salesian Bulletin. So I'm quite fond of this because this person came to know about Don Bosco by reading the Salesian Bulletin and he wanted to join this congregation. Uh, their parents were not for it and they didn't allow him at all. But somehow he convinced them and he joined the uh, Salishan congregation. But of course, those days there was a problem with war. It uh, interrupted this uh, novitiate, it interrupted very many times. And then again he was taken for war. Then he comes back, uh, he, started, he starts his uh, Salishan life and he becomes a lay brother. And uh, he was an excellent printer again in the field of communication. He takes a degree in uh, printing and he, he goes on to teach the traits to the uh, young boy, uh, youngsters and he was, he was excellent youth minister. He was doing an amazing youth ministry job and of course he was there in Budapest and incidentally I also visited Hungary because one of my uh, companions is there as a rector of one of the houses there and he took me to various places. And, and this person, uh, when, 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 uh, when World War II uh, broke, uh, there were a lot of issues came up. And then uh, finally, uh, people, Christians were persecuted. And when he was in the hiding and trying to teach traits to the youngsters, he was arrested and he was taken away. And, uh, and when the communist regime f fell, 1989, till then they had no news, but then they came to know that Stephen was hanged in the prison in 1953 and he died for faith. A person who completely gave his life, uh, he was a lay brother, but an excellent youth minister and he was at the forefront and, uh, and, and that's how he 
he, he showed his fidelity to God. That's why it is said, the persecution brings a, a great a vacuum or gulf between the human beings, while the martyrs are the ones who bridge this gulf. And when we celebrate a, a brother Stephen, who is a martyr, and who sets an example for all of us, uh, we, will also be, we will also be reflecting on the Beatitudes in the Gospel reading. At the end of it, when someone is persecuted for Christ's sake, that is the victory for our, for our uh, personal life as well as the uh, life of the church. So during this Holy Eucharist, let us all pray through the powerful intercession of uh, Mariam Teresa as well as Blessed uh, Stephen Sandor. Let's all have this passion for Christ. We should be ready to give our life for Christ. And this, this just demands a little more, little more dedication, a little more discipline in our personal living. For the times we just lived the life as an, uh, with the flow of the world, let's feel sorry and ask the Lord's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you gave the blessed martyr Stephen the strength to meet trials and persecution with faith and the grace to offer his life for the sake of the young. Grant through his intercession that we may always work in the service of truth and bring the gospel of joy to all through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 17, verses from 1 to 6. Elijah the Dishbite of Dishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, Depart from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, that is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought in bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brew. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let your response be, My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the mountains from where shall I come my help? My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Your response. May he never allow you to stumble. Let him sleep not your God. No, he sleeps nor slumbers Israel's God. Your response. The Lord is your God and your shade. At your right side he stands. By day and sun shall not smite you, nor the moon in the night. Your response. The Lord will guard you from evil. 
He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and coming, both now and forever. Your response? Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets you were, who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years back, I was talking to one of our young seminarians, and I asked him, what is his life goal? And he told me he would like to go to a mission land and die as a martyr. I was very edified to hear such statements from young seminarians. And that gives a lot of consolation and encouragement to the church of today that even today, there are people who are passionate about their faith are willing to even give their life for Christ. As we've heard in the introduction, how Blessed Stephen Sandor, a coadjutor brother who gave his life for the youngsters, for the church, and for his faith. And very aptly, I, I, the reading of today, the gospel reading today, is the Beatitudes, which is a manifesto of Jesus himself a parallel of the Ten Commandments. Moses goes to Mount Sinai and makes a covenant with God and he has these Ten Commandments given by God to him. And also we see the parallel how Jesus is seated at the mount, a mountain, and then he gives this manifesto, which has got two parts. The first part talks about the relationship between God and, and men or people. The second four talks about how, what is expected from people of God, the way we need to live our Christian life. And we see in the first four uh, Beatitudes, what, uh, which talks about poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, and uh, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. These four talks about our vulnerability. Dear friends, we need to take pride in our vulnerabilities. Only then we will, we will, uh, depend completely on God. And that's why like St. Paul himself always took pride in Jesus Christ, pride in God. So here we see we as people of God, we are vulnerable, we are poor in spirit, we keep mourning, we are expected to be meek, we are not very powerful and we should thirst for righteousness, we, we, we are filled with hunger. And this shows we are, we, we are not self-sufficient. We depend on God, God's providence. And that's why uh, people of Israel, though, it's, 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 it's very, you know, 
uh, they, they took pride in saying that we are the chosen race. Yes, you are chosen race. But all the time you are in slavery, all the time you were persecuted. Therefore, it, is, it, it, it was all the time you, people of Israel were depending on God. They were not uh, a nation which was self-sufficient, which was powerful. No. So this is how the first four talks about the attitude people of God should, should develop. That we are vulnerable. We have people filled with weakness and we take pride in our weakness because God is there to take care of us. And the second fourth beatitude talks about how we need to behave in our personal life. We need to be pure. We are the ones who need to make peace with the others. Instead of being very arrogant and instead of showing our ego, we need to go down and forgive people and make peace. And we should be ready to be even persecuted. We need to, we need to even be ready to give our life as we have seen in the life of Saint Stephen himself, uh, Blessed Stephen himself. This is, this is what is expected from people of God, that we live a life which is closer to God, modeling ourselves on Jesus himself. So dear friends, this is a lesson that we all of us can take home today. That we can always, as Christians, as Catholics, yes, we are chosen. We take so much of pride in that, but our pride is in our vulnerabilities, in our weakness, because we are completely, we are, we are nothing without God. And of course, when it comes to our personal living, we need to inherit these qualities of purity. We need to make peace with people and we need to be courageous and we need to be ready even to give our life. This bread we offer you With a humble heart, O oh Lord This wine we offer you With a grateful heart, O oh Lord sacrifice oh we thank you lord for the sign of love you have shared with one and all this bread we offer you with a humble heart oh lord this wine we offer you with a grateful heart oh lord these gifts we bring to you to remember your sacrifice Oh, we thank you, Lord, for the sign of love you have shared with one and all. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for the sign of love you have shared with one and all. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let your blessing descend like dew fall, O Lord, on the offering which we present to you and confirm us in the faith which the blessed martyr Stephen witnessed to at the price of his life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Stephen, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Anthony Sam, your Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and Saint Mariam, Teresa, Blessed Stephen Sandor, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the participation in your holy mysteries impart to us, O Father, the spirit of fortitude which render blessed Stephen faithful in your service and victorious in martyrdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.